Is it possible to love someone that you have never seen? Is it even possible that this question is even hard to perceive? Tell me. Is it possible to love a man or a woman in a far off place? A man unaware of God's love, a woman unaware of God's grace, this man, a woman that has never had the opportunity to grasp the knowledge of the gospel of Christ, never given the ability to fully access joy in his or her life, this man bound into sin unknowingly, isolated from salvation while death inside him is growing slowly, slipping away from God's glory with the possibility of being void of God for eternity, this man a woman that will soon meet death in their path would not meet God's grace, but would soon know God's wrath. I say all of this to ask, is it possible to love someone that you have never seen? Knowing that these things are not just mere dreams, but could soon become their reality. He or she would not live happily ever after in this depravity, but could you lavishly love as Christ loved us? And what if it wasn't just one man, but actually a few billion? And not just men, but women and children. Could you love them enough to share with them the gospel of Jesus so that their souls could be redeemed? But how then would they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? We have been commissioned to reach them and to reach these people groups it may cause some inconvenience but could you imagine the sound of 6,500 languages lifting up the name of Jesus that's billions and billions of people becoming believers so again I ask you could you love someone that you haven't seen knowing that we are the hands and the feet of the king as we look not to things that are seen but to things that are unseen for the things that are seen are transient but the things that are unseen are eternal after hearing the staggering stats about the unreach i had to see it for myself and so i went to india for two months the low point of my life was when i saw a grown man bowing down to and worshiping an orange stone idol that he thought could save him. Now the only difference between me and this man is that he had no idea. He was running toward a Christless eternity. He was lost and nobody was coming to find him. How could I not do something about that? So I called about 100 of my peers and asked them, number one, have you ever considered a career in missions to the unreached? And a lot of them said yes. And the second question, why are you not there now? Every single person had the same answer, student debt. So maybe I could figure out a way to help them pay their student debt. Today, aspiring missionaries are just stuck. But here's the worst part. It takes the average college graduate 21 years to pay off their student debt, 21 years. In the meantime, these people bought homes, got a few cars, they're coaching their kids t-ball. And by that point, do you think they're gonna uproot their entire family structure to go overseas to the mission field like they once dreamed? It ain't gonna happen. And here's the net result. Men like the one I met in India and billions of others who've never heard the gospel in their language are still waiting for it. Our generation is at risk of dropping the rope. This is exactly why we started the GoFund. We're a nonprofit on a mission to accelerate Christian disciple making among the unreached by eliminating the barrier of student debt for qualified missionaries. We don't want to do 50 things. We just want to do one thing and do it exceptionally well. Now, once missionaries are approved for our program and on the mission field, we pay 100% of their student debt on a monthly basis. 100% of every public dollar we receive goes directly towards student debt repayment for missionaries like these. At the GoFund, a rope holder is anybody who agrees to give monthly to pay toward the student debt of our approved missionary partners. In God's economy, the missionary is not more important than the rope holder. Both are critical to the task. The question is, which end of the rope will you be on?
My name is Amber and I am a rope holder. I'm a recent graduate and as I was in college, I started to hear more about God's heart for the nations in an organization called the Go Fund. I didn't understand that student debt was such an obstacle to get missionaries on the mission field. As I started to learn about what my God cared about, I wanted to take part in it. And one of the ways to do that was to give, but I'm a student um, on loans and with a minimum paying job, I could only give maybe 10 bucks a month. And I started to question, can God really use that? But yes, he can. My God is big enough to use my small sacrifice to make much of his name. And I started to question, what if I, I gave 10 bucks a month and one of my friends did, we could get a group together to give a larger amount because God is worthy of that. Giving doesn't always come naturally for me in the season of life, but it was a really sweet thing to realize that everything that I own, my life and resources are the Lord's. And so I can give that freely for Him because it's worth it. I can hold the rope for families like the Rimsteads and I find deep joy in that and it's absolutely worth it. Hi, we're the Rimsteads. My name is David, this is my wife Emily and currently we're serving in the field of Papua New Guinea, specifically among an unreached tribal group called Maliali. It was no longer about what I wanted to do with my life but about how the Lord could use me for His global purpose. The more I was reading God's Word, the more I was convinced that I didn't need to stay, but I needed to go. Our student debt was not just another hurdle in trying to get overseas. Our student debt was definitely a mountain, and we looked at it and wondered, how are we going to get through this in order to get overseas? So the GoFund became our solution. With what would have taken us 20 years to accomplish, the GoFund accomplished it and we were able to go overseas immediately. Our whole task for the day is to get outside and be with the Maliali people. And so one of my main language helpers, her name is Kali, they actually built their house right next to ours, like directly, like six feet away from our house. She comes to my house regularly and we'll start walking to our garden. And this is the middle of the jungle. And so it is very tricky to walk in. And when part of walking through their gardens is they just try down these huge trees and they fall over and then they walk across them all through their garden. And so for them, it's really easy. Kali just glides across these logs like it's no big deal. But for me, I do the humble thing and I scoot across on my bum because I'm just not capable of walking across it. She noticed very quickly that I was scared to walk across these trees. And so she would come and she would grab my hand and she would hold my hand as we walked across the tree bridge. And you know, we we were doing this for months, which turned into years. And I remember one day um, her holding my hand, coming and grabbing my hand and holding it and walking across the tree bridge. And I got really emotional and we got to the other side of the bridge and she said, Emily, like you look like you're crying. What's wrong? Are you okay? And I said, yes, I'm okay, Callie. Right now you hold my hand every single day to teach me your language and to teach me your culture, but there's gonna come a day where it's gonna change and I'm gonna hold your hand and I'm gonna teach you God's talk. And I can't wait for that day to come. The reality is that because of your partnership, because of you guys holding the rope, keeping us there, we are so close to being fluent in the Malayali language, so close for them to be able to finally read and write in their language so close for them to be able to see the scriptures for themselves. I mean, we are almost there uh, for the day that they hear the gospel of Jesus Christ for the very first time. And that is gonna be an amazing day. Not because of Emily and David, not because of our coworkers, but because of all of us, rope holders, people praying, financially supporting, because all of us are working for this endeavor to see the Maliali people hear the gospel for the very first time. A rope holder is anyone who agrees to give monthly to pay toward the student debt of our approved missionaries. We provide our rope holders with a missionary box outlining key benefits that are exclusive to this community. A one-to-one -one pairing with an approved missionary partner, exclusive stories of lives change on the mission field and reports about the growth of the organization and a rope holder keychain, a symbol to remind you of the eternal impact you are making by joining this community. I would like to personally invite you to play a critical role in the fulfillment of the Great Commission, to make disciples of all nations. 
Now, as we pay the student debt of missionaries to help them get overseas, this is exactly what we're focused on. It only costs $14 to pay off the student debt of a missionary on the mission field for a day. And some can give more than that a month and others less. But 100% of what you give goes directly to paying off the student debt of missionaries in the unreached people group. Every generation has a decision to make when it comes to the Great Commission. Will we pick up the rope? Or will we wait yet another generation for the Great Commission to be completed? The church has all the resources and people that she needs to get the job done. Now, will you join our growing community and give monthly and become a rope holder with the GoFund today?